Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, ju I just need uh, one more minute. I just get my slides open. Eh? Please wait. Just give me a minute. Eh? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Just give me a couple of minutes. Eh? I'm just getting my slides open. Okay, sir. Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, good, af good afternoon, sir. Yeah, who's that? Sir, uh, Nikhil. Uh, yeah, Nikhil, tell me. Nothing, sir. Uh, you, uh, I was trying to call you, sir. I thought uh, it will be late today. No, no, I, I just... Uh, two minutes late. I'm just getting my slides open. Oh, okay, okay sir. Right. Um, how many people have joined? About 50 people. Okay, good. Time to go start. I'll just share my screen. Meanwhile, you can identify a few people to answer, two, three people. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Can you see my slide? Uh, yes, sir. Right. So, who, who is going to answer questions today? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Ganesh Ingle, sir, you are there. <clears throat> Saurabh uh, Kapadia. Uh, Abhijit uh, Khartare. I'm not seeing, I'm not hearing any response from them. Are, they are there? <laughs> yes, they are there in the meeting. <laughs> okay. Wasim, uh, Dr. Wasim, you are there? Uh, Rupesh uh, Srivastava. Uh, yes, sir. So, Rupesh is, yes, is it? Huh, yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Yes. Who else? Uh, uh, Patel Kashyap. Kashyap, you are there? Yes, yes, Nikhil. Uh, yeah, yeah, Kashyap. Okay. 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 So, uh, one or two, sir, uh, more, I'll just... Okay. So I'll start, uh, you can identify me. Yes. Right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So, the... Today's talk is... Uh, basically, because I think one of you requested me uh, to take a talk on uh, surface markings of the cardiac chambers 
so that you are able to identify the angiograms because you people are used to coronary angio but you are not used to chamber angiograms and you do not know the radiological anatomy of the heart i have prepared this talk it might take a little longer than on usual time are you are you do you have any class after this no sir no sir okay so okay i'll try to finish it by half past 3 or so okay so uh, uh, if you remember i i told you that we'll discuss one day the anatomy of the heart as seen in angiogram and how to identify it and there are some ways of learning it some of you who are familiar with angiogram maybe the senior guys may be already familiar with what i am talking uh, but a lot of you may not know what uh, the views are how to identify chambers and moreover even the ones who know it's always good to revise uh, the an angiographic and because this one of the most crucial things in your cardiology practice whether you do echocardiogram whether you do heart surgery whether you do diagnostic angiography of congenital heart disease or you do coronary angiography or you do coronary intervention or you are going to do uh, taver and pulmonary valve and other implantation mitral valve repair the radiographic anatomy is the single most important thing now this is something which you must it must it must be burnt into your hard disk you know like you know we, we we don't think twice before we say 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 we never think twice no you all it's it's, it's ingrained in your brain 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 nobody thinks the answer we already know it answer that that is the way the radiographic anatomy should be in your mind okay that's the whole idea of this talk some of this is very basic some of this will be uh things which we haven't discussed before so the heart is a very complex structure uh, as you know that and it's a very nicely neatly very compactly packed inside the thorax so that's okay for its protection and for its um, efficient function but when we want to image it and uh, identify chambers and different parts of the heart it makes our life very difficult you can see that it's not a simple geometrical structure it's it it neither square nor round nor spherical nor oval it it doesn't have, it's have a, it has its own shape it has a very complex contour and it's lying in a very oblique position in the heart in the chest uh, surrounded by many other structures and there are many structures attached to it entering it leaving it so each one of these is important for our cardiology diagnosis now the if you remember i told you that i use a heart model to understand the anatomy of the heart now this is a model i was talking about this is uh, i don't know what made up of some light material plastic or something it is a uh, colored blue and nice right? it's like it's just about the size of my hand so that's about the size of an adult car, adult uh, my person's heart it's a normal expected size of a heart and uh, there are different models you will have hard model you will have soft model you will have uh, intricate model some this is a very simple model where the exterior anatomy is as of a normal heart and you can actually take out the anterior wall away from the uh, model and see the interior of the heart and, and as you can see the heart is a very very complex structure it doesn't all the we draw diagrams like ra on top of rv la on top of L, uh, lv and ra and la side by side it's not like that it's a very very complex anatomy and the whole uh, set of chambers are twisted around each other and this is the anterior wall where on the epicardium where all the coronary arteries and all running so we'll be using this model quite i use this model very very often to understand the anatomy i use it now and then even now to when i report an angio and i always have it on my table so that when i talk to a patient i can explain the anatomy to that patient sometime when i have doubt about an angiogram i have to go back to this model so i strongly recommend that you should you people should get my now the ideal thing would be to have a heart a human heart in your hand but that's not possible pathological specimens are much very very difficult to get and therefore this model is the next best okay all right now 
radiography started in simple you no know, anthroposterior view and uh, that's the tip- that the model i was talking about with the anterior wall put on to the, it looks like it and if you look at the plain chest x ray it's very easy to identify it's a plain chest x ray when you have all the bones visible and the clavicles visible the spine you straight away you can say it's a frontal x ray uh, you also know the post anterior based on because the scapular nerves are on that because you're seeing the entire set of two ribs entire set of uh, clavicles and therefore you know everything is symmetrically placed around the midline and therefore it must be a frontal x ray that is anteroposterior or posteroanterior view x ray and the view the heart inside the chest is sitting in this more or less this position and that this correspond to that so if you have an anatomy called model in your hand you can identify what are the cardiac borders the uppermost border is formed by the superior vena cava here the ascending aorta lies just inside the superior vena cava in normal heart and therefore it may not reach the cardiac border but when the ascending aorta dilate it forms a convex border here again okay? and below the superior vena cava you have the right atrium right atrium goes all the way to the uh, diaphragm it in fact you don't see the ivc at any part and therefore the ra goes all the way to the diaphragm that's about the left cardi- right cardiac border when you come to the left cardiac border this one is actually in the supra uh, just below the suprastal notch you don't it under the clavicle so you won't see it in the uh, uh, front chest actually so the first structure you see below the clavicle is the aortic knuckle so you see that corresponds to the shadow here and in in fact i have described all this here also can you see you can correlate the x ray the model and the line diagram here are you able to see this figure well yes sir ha uh-huh, yes sir okay now so the just below the aorta you get the bump of the main pulmonary artery here the lp actually goes posteriorly arches backwards and arches down although i have shown it here you don't really see it in the model because going backwards and down and one the branch is going to the lung you don't really clearly see just below that you see a little bit of the l appendage and that that's the l appendage here and then you see the left ventricle now you can see that the right atrium forms the cardiac border here the left ventricle forms the border here and the right ventricle doesn't appear anywhere in the cardiac border it lies in the middle here it lies between the interventricular groove that is the left anterior descending artery here and the av groove here that is the right coronary artery and the diaphragmatic border so that's what is shown here the right right ventricle is like doesn't form the cardiac border. therefore in a frontal x ray you never talk of right ventricular enlargement okay it never forms the cardiac border and of course the so the right ventricle leads to the pulmonary artery which is well shown here so now you can correlate a simple straight chest x ray with the cardiac structure and you also know where the expected Uh, chambers are i showed you a pacing lead last time which was perforated if you remember correctly and the lead was almost till here you remember that x ray any of you yes yes sir. yes so if you know that the normal right ventricle stops quite some distance from the left cardiac border so if you have a chest x ray today and a chest x ray tomorrow the lead has migrated to the left cardiac border you would know that it is in the left ventricle so that's the importance of knowing the surface anatomy and this is a simple straightforward frontal view so obviously with such a stru- complex structure like uh, now in the frontal view remember what you're seeing is actually only the right atrium and the right ventricle the entire left heart left heart is little a little bit is seen here but the entire left side of structure is actually lying behind the right side chamber you're not seeing it now although we call it right atrium and left atrium the left atrium is actually behind the right atrium behind this here and the left ventricle is predominantly behind the right ventricle and what you are seeing when you remove this wall is actually the ventricular septum you don't okay so if you remove this right ventricular wall you will see the ventricular septum and the okay. therefore that what i have shown in the next figure here for example in the frontal view you see this there's a book a taken book uh, picture therefore don't mind this la- labeling but you can see that the right ventricle actually superimposes the left ventricle completely and only a little bit is seen on the side 
therefore when you do an rv angiogram you see the right ventricle but you will still see a little bit of cardiac cellet outside the border of the right ventricle the left ventricle when the dye goes to the recirculation when the dye goes all the way from pulmonary artery pulmonary vein back to la and then it comes to lv you will see the left ventricle filling and that time you will see this cellet now you don't see the lv here because the lv is hidden behind the rv and the contrast has to reach through the pulmonary vein to the lv to be visible so in a frontal x ray you see this view if you take away the rv or if you do an rv angio and follow it through the levo phase you will see the lv now do you understand how the anatomy of the heart is in when they are placed in the anatomical position they are left to called left to right but they are actually more anterior and posterior right Hey, you have to say yes or no. Yes, I don't. Yes, I, I, yes. I, I, yes. I, otherwise, I won't know whether you are hearing or not. Okay. So okay. now that's a very simple frontal view. And uh, remember, in radiology, we have to we are seeing what is called a sectional anatomy. No, we are not seeing a three-dimensional anatomy, either in angiogram or in echo or in CT or in uh, cine angiogram, MRI. We don't see a three-dimensional anatomy. We only see a two-dimensional. so when you see two dimensional view of any structure you can have two views if somebody sees the cell phone in this view he will say it looks like a pillar doesn't it if somebody sees it in this view he will say it looks like a something flat instrument with some buttons so if you remember the story of four blind men who described an elephant no one blind one blind man got caught hold of the leg one blind man got hold of the tail one blind man got hold of the ear and each one described the elephant according to his own description but the total description will come only when you get all these views together am i correct so so the 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 message is that radiological anatomy always has to be sought in a minimum of two views preferably in as many views as possible to get the full picture otherwise you will get a very distorted you will feel you will think that the structure is a pole or you will think that it's a flat structure but it's neither you know you have to get a three dimensional you to, to get at least two orthogonal views orthogonal means two views at perpendicular to each other or preferably as many views as possible okay so then people started taking lateral chest x rays So what is the lateral chest X-ray? Now, if you see, see the, 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 when you turn the heart in your hand into your lateral view, look at it from the side, the contours look quite different. The heart has become much more uh, rounded. It's no longer oval. It's rounded. The length it looks much shorter in length because the apex is coming towards you. You know, it's coming towards you, and uh, it sort of the front shook front of the heart looks somewhat flattened out. in a chest x ray how do you identify lateral very easy because the spine is at the back and the heart has cleared the spine the heart is entirely in front of the spine okay that you know that they it's a lateral view and anteriorly you see the sternum and the sternum is well profiled the, the final proof of being lateral you see that there are two sets of ribs one is the right sided ribs and the left sided rib so both the ribs are perfectly overlapping each other so you see only one set of ribs so that is a lateral view if it was oblique you will see if it was oblique you will see some ribs in front of the spine and you will see some ribs behind the spine if it was an oblique view okay so that is how okay. a lateral view you should keep the heart in your hand always when you interpret an angiogram so that you are very clear about the lie of the heart so but then ap and lateral is not enough for interpreting uh, cardiac structure because again it's such a complex structure two views probably are not enough and therefore you need oblique views so started taking oblique chest x rays so when you take an oblique chest x ray you can have a right anterior oblique or a left anterior oblique and that fundamental to your interpretation you must know how to identify left anterior oblique how to identify right anterior oblique now right anterior oblique is very easy the typical contour of the heart no the contour of the heart is that egg shaped or ovoid shape is there 
in right anterior oblique it becomes exaggerated it really forms very well right and the spine moves towards the left that means if you do right anterior oblique the spine moves towards the left of the heart well left means the operator's left i'm talking or patient's right okay I'm, i shouldn't confuse the, okay we'll talk about the patient's left and right now right so this is the patient's left and this is the patient's right so when you do right anterior oblique the spine moves towards the right and the heart moves towards the left now important to differentiate that it is not lateral when you do lat when you do a rio view what happens is the left sided ribs are seen in front of the spine but the right sided ribs are seen behind the spine right so this is not lateral you, one set of ribs are seen here one set of ribs are seen here whereas in a two lateral you should see only one set of ribs okay secondly the heart is moving to the left and the spine is towards the right therefore this must be right anterior oblique view in contrast when you go to the left anterior oblique view as you rotate the patient to left anterior oblique view the spine moves towards the left of the heart and in now you see the <clears throat> i'm sorry i made a mistake in rao view you see the right sided ribs in front and the left sided ribs behind okay in lao view you see the left sided ribs behind and the right sided ribs in front right so this imp- this view should be Im- imprinted in your patient the ovoid shape the position of the spine and the set of two ribs if you see this shape and this shape corresponds so anterior and rao look like similar to each other and this shape of the heart no a rounded shape with a with a, with a shortened apex corresponds to the lao these two look more similar the lateral and lao will look similar rao and ap will look similar now it's very easy to make out rao and lao uh, excuse yes. me sir, sir yes. Uh, ribs uh, which is posterior and which is anterior can you just uh, repeat it sir yes okay so so can you imagine the chest uh, uh, let's go back to this so when you rotate this patient oh sorry one second see this patient now rotate that the right shoulder comes forward and the left shoulder goes backwards can you this frontal x imagine the right shoulder comes forward and the left shoulder goes backwards okay and you are looking from here then the right ribs are in front of the heart or the front of the spine and the left ribs are behind the spine that is our overview okay now imagine this yes, x-ray yes. you rotate this way yes, that, that the left shoulder comes forward and the right shoulder goes backwards okay yes, when, the, when the left shoulder comes forward and right shoulder goes backward and you are looking from this side from here like this then the left ribs will be in front and the right sided ribs will be behind Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. No, you don't identify. I think the which ribs are we have behind and back. Yeah, yeah. All those things. All those things you don't need to identify. I'm only saying that they don't overlap like this. That's all you need yes, to know. Yes, sir. Okay. You you make sure that they are not overlapping with each other, and then look whether the heart is in front of the is, is the heart is to the right of the spine or left of the spine. That's all you need to make out, and you have to look at the shape of the heart. Is it rounded or is it oval? these are the three points okay so this is la overview and that's ra overview now you can also have surface markings in uh, uh, la overview and ra overview but i'll be using more of this in when i use the I'll discuss the angiogram but again you must know what is the surface anatomy when you do ra overview the if you do a steep ra overview the heart has come clean of the spine it has it has left the spine and come clearly in front if you do a little shallower degree of rao then some of this heart will overlap the spine so that is how you know whether it is shallow rao or steep rao now 
because you don't have to die when you are shown an angiogram and asked in the examination or in practice you mm. don't have to say whether 20 degrees are or 30 degrees are or 45 degrees are not not needed all you have to say is mild are or steep are or lateral right now mild are o means the cardiac fillet will overlap the spine steep are o means it will clear the spine lateral means these two ribs will be overlapping with each other got it yes sir yes sir now when you come to the cardiac anatomy when you rotated the heart in are o view the the right atrium still forms the with border but now it is the posterior border no longer the right border no because the rao view this becomes the posterior border right now because you have rotated the heart the svc doesn't form the cardiac border again now the left atrium comes and forms the posterior cardiac border here left atrium and pulmonary veins from the border of course you won't be able to see the pulmonary veins and all but you will see a vague shadow here a rounded shadow now what forms the anterior border anterior border formed by the right ventricle and going into the pulmonary artery aorta is not seen inside the cardiac cell but the arch will be seen in the high up in the neck here so these line diagrams are something very very important you must always have it in your uh, memory when you go to lao view now why is it lao because the heart is somewhat rounded it is the apex is foreshortened the spine has gone to the left of the heart it has gone towards the left of the heart and it's oblique because the two ribs are not overlapping each other now what is the posterior most structure here left ventricle it forms the cardiac border and just above that formed by the la la doesn't is not seen in the frontal view but in la view or lateral view it will be seen forming the upper posterior cardiac border whereas when you come to the front it will be the anterior border is formed by the uh, right ventricle and going up into the pulmonary artery anyway we will be discussing this more when we discuss angiogram okay just remember these two figures it will come again and again when you discuss angiograms all right now again i have to come it's a heart is a very complex structure now if you are looking at the pulmonary artery it starts here but then it goes obliquely then goes backward and then it goes downward the right pulmonary goes arch forms uh, arch forms the right side goes backward and to the left so it's all a very complex structure. the coronary artery if you see the left coronary artery starts from the aorta comes behind the pulmonary artery in a horizontal manner and then it obliquely and then it goes here and at the apex it turns around and goes backwards now the complex course of the coronary artery is shown here for example this is the left coronary artery now you see the circumflex how it comes the first part is different from the second part and then the third part is different the last part is curves around similarly rca comes forward right av groove makes a loop around the av sulcus goes up forms a loop and then goes down so such a complex structure you cannot see in one view or two views on or not even in ap lateral rao lao you probably need different angulations to see all parts of the heart and all parts of the coronary arteries and that's the importance of taking multiple angiographic views and angled views the view which shows the left main artery may not show the mid lady the view which shows mid lady may not show the distal lady the view which shows proximal rc may not show the distal rc you may need different views therefore you need more than one view multiple views and that's the why and when you open the heart for ventricular angiogram it becomes even more complicated look at the septum the septum is no normally when we draw, when we draw a diagram to explain to anybody we just draw a rv lv and then we all draw a straight line this is the septum but the actual septum is not a straight line it's a very very curved structure it has curvature in two views if you remember the your echo in short axis it forms a curve like this it forms a curve isn't it do you remember the curved septum in short axis view like this like this it forms a yes, curve yes sir okay in addition there is another curve can you see this it comes up like this and it bends backward 
see this is another curve so the septum is a very complex structure it's it's curved in more than one plane in different places therefore again one view will not show the all parts of the septum similarly rv also all parts may not be shown in one view whatever view shows the right ventricular inflow may not show you the right ventricular outflow very well this is the right ventricle comes from behind comes forward and to the left and then it goes forward superiorly and then it arches backwards into the rv outflow so such a complex route will not be shown in one view okay. again left ventricle can you see the septum is curved so if you take a horizontal section it is curved like this and if you take a longitudinal section it is curved like this so if you have a vsd in this location you will need a, a different projection to profile it than if a vsd is in this location okay uh, uh, so then for you need multiple views and multiple views not only in ap lateral rao and lao but you also need cranial cranial rao cranial lao caudal lao plain caudal caudal rao and multiple views so that you can see all parts of these curved structures that's the most important thing and that's why you need a catheter the modern catheter the three three major component to give you a diagnosis of course the machine is very important the subject you have to do a procedure safely and get him out of it and the third most important thing is you and the most important person who does the interpretation the first two factors will not give you the interpretation you have to interpret it with the use of the this piece of equipment now the modern cat labs i think i'm you are all familiar quickly going through it we have an image intensifier here and sorry the uh, yeah, so x ray x ray source here and an image intensifier here and the patient lies on the table and therefore this is the view for a anterior posterior or frontal view you turn it around and in modern machine you don't move the patient when we learned cardiology the tube was fixed and the patient had to be rotated but now the machine rotate so the this is the lateral projection i think this uh, you most of you are familiar and i won't spend much time on it you can also do lao view where the uh, x ray source enters from the left posterior aspect of the patient and image intensifier is in close proximity with the right anterior chest that's the left anterior oblique you can have different degrees of left anterior oblique as i said mild moderate and true lateral and uh, you can add cranial tilt when the when the x-ray tube goes caudal and the image intensifier goes cranial you get what we call a cranial tilt you can do cranial tilt with any degree of obliquity that is you can do cranial tilt in rao or lao or in a plain ap view or you could do the reverse in caudal view now it's important to know how an angiogram looks in all these views because you never know in a given patient what view will profile a particular part of the coronary artery or a particular part of the heart so you have to know the cardiac anatomy in every single projection in space in 360 degrees you, you if i if i i can turn the heart in any direction in any way if i show you the heart you must be able to identify on a angiogram what chambers lie where and that is the purpose of my talk today again this is a representation of the you know, the patient is lying here uh, with the head and towards me so the the it can rotate to the uh, sorry head and rotate uh, away from me so the the image is by going to the right of the patient Uh, give you ra overview frontal and if it goes to the left of the patient there will be la overview and extreme will give you lateral right right now you could theoretically do more, even more steep view but we don't require need to do that because if you understand these these are uh, only a reverse of uh, other views so we don't need to discuss that 
Now, this is another uh, view of the patient to show you the cranial and caudal tilt. I will explain to you why we do the cranial and caudal tilt later. But when you do a cranial tilt, the, the source of X-ray moves towards the feet and the image intensifier moves towards the chin of the patient. And in caudal tilt, it moves uh, the opposite way. Okay. Now, before we go on to interpretation of angiogram, please remember that the angiographic image is only a shadow. And shadow will depend on where the source of light is and what is its relationship to the object. Therefore, the shadow, you know, you must have seen when you are standing in the sun, when the light is on one side, and uh, depending on how close you are to the light, your shadow can be very small, it can be very long, it can be oblique, and it can be moderately long, it can become very long, depending on the angle of the light to the body. Similarly, a, a shadow in the sun, you, you have seen it, no? when a pole and the shadow of the sun it changes according to the position of the sun. So the most conventional view is, suppose you have a structure like this tube. If you take a cross-section out of it, this view is called a cross-section, also called a N-fast view. So it will look like a circle. If you look at it from the side, it will look like a two parallel lines. I mean, you won't, in a sectional view, you won't see the third dimension. That's I have drawn here to show it is a tube. But what you will see is actually only two parallel lines. When you see two views, you put both together and know that it is a tube. Isn't it? Otherwise, if you see this alone, you will think it is a circle. If you see this alone, you will think you will think it is a rectangle. If you see both these together, you know that it is a hollow tube. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. yes. Now, these two views are called orthogonal views. Huh? This is cutting straight across. And this is looking at it from the side. This is called orthogonal views. But if I don't take strictly perpendicular, I take at angles, no, like this. Then what will happen? This will not be a circle anymore. It will become an oblong. It will become oval. Right? Now, that oblong is important for echocardiographic image, which I will talk to you in a separate lecture. But remember that in X-ray, by and large, we go to two perpendicular views so that in, in, in our interpretation is correct. Now, this orthogonal view is also important for the lesion. Suppose you have an atheroma occupying the lumen like this. In one view, it will look like this, that it is occupying um, uh, a, a, a indentation like this here. But in another view, if you look at it from here, you may think that the lumen is normal because the dye is extending from wall to wall. You get my point? If you look from here, you will see the indentation in the contrast like this because of the atheroma here. But you look from here, the dye is extending from wall to wall. The black is a dye, okay? From here to here. So from looking from here, the artery will look normal. But looking from here, the artery will look like 60% indentation. That is why you do multiple views in coronary arteries. Can you see here a lesion which is very marked in this view? In another oblique view, it's not so marked. So the same lesion in two different views may, may look different. Get my point? Remember, this is a yes. RAO view. This is RAO view. And this is LAO view. So the same lesion in two views may look quite different. In one view, very tight. In another view, not so tight. So you need orthogonal views in mixing. Now, the, when you do orthogonal views, that, uh, that's why you take multiple views and multiple uh, things. And also, since you take multiple views, you must also know the cardiac anatomy when you do an coronary angiography. For example, here. Now, again, I'll go back to, let me go to the heart again. Hmm. Yeah. See, look at the left main coronary artery here. 
If you do a straight LAO angio here, you are looking along the length of the left main coronary artery and the proximal LED. Can you see that? So the left main coronary artery and the, and the proximal LED will be foreshortened. Therefore, you may not be able to see the details of the proximal LED very much here. On the other hand, if you do a left anterior oblique with cranial tilt, you will enlarge and elongate the proximal part of the left anterior descending artery. Yes? Okay. So when you do that, you get better views. But when you do, when you do cranial view, sorry, I didn't get it. You said something? Okay. So no, sir. Uh, what profile, what elongates the proximal part of the coronary artery will shorten the distal part of the coronary artery. It may do it differently. Therefore, you have to do, again, other view for the distal coronary artery. I keep repeating that again and again because that's the principle of angiography. Now, whenever you do an angiogram, you must know where the cardiac chambers are. And uh, I have borrowed some of these figures from a YouTube video. Uh, I don't know, maybe some of you would have seen. From Ch Sri Chitra Trinal, one Dr. Rao has put up a YouTube video. On, and I borrowed some of these figures from that. You know. So, so he has shown beautifully... When you do a LAO uh, cranial angiogram, you must know where the left ventricle is. You must know where the left atrium is. Where you must know where the right ventricle is. Because then you can identify the branches much easier. So the left anterior descending artery is in the interventricular groove. So anything to the left is left ventricle. But anything to the left means only up to the circumflex artery. Anything above the circumflex artery is left atrium. So it's beautifully marked here. Anything above the AV groove is the left atrium, which is foreshortened here. You don't see the full LA. You see the most of the LV here. The septum is end on, so like the side of a cell phone. You won't see the septum much here except the profile. All the branches here are on the surface of the LV, and they are the diagonal branches or the OM branches. The branches on this side from the left coronary artery would be the septal the right ventricle. So that becomes simpler. Whenever you do a coronary angina, you must know where the cardiac chambers are. Now, when I discuss with the uh, PGs, I find they are, when I, when I show them this angio and they tell me where is the LA in this case, uh, I find many of them cannot identify where the LA is. If I ask you where the pulmonary artery will lie in this view, uh, I doubt whether some of you can tell me that. Uh, so that... You must know the cardiac anatomy even when you are doing a coronary angio. Okay, the degree of LAO you can judge by the degree of uh, overlapping of the heart uh, on the spine. For example, in frontal view, the heart overlap, but it has got that characteristic ovoid shape. This is the frontal view. As you go into LAO view, the heart becomes oval in shape. In mild LAO, it overlaps. 50% here and 50% here. Okay. When you go to steep LAO, only a little bit is behind the spine. Only one third is behind the spine. Most of the heart is in front of the spine. And when you go to lateral, the entire heart is in front of the spine. Now, why am I telling you this? Because I already told you how to identify oblique view with the chest X-ray, isn't it? Why am I telling you this? Because when you do an angiogram, you tend to reduce the field of interest. You don't get clavicles, ribs, everything in an angiogram. You get a much more limited view when you do an angiogram because that improves the quality of angio. Now look at this view. Do you see the clavicles? Do you see the two set of ribs? So how do you make out the LAO or RAO? You make out LAO or RAO. Suppose you didn't have the coronary angio here. How do you make out? One the heart is ovoid in shape. Two, the spine is always visible. Whatever be the degree of field cutting you do, the spine will always be visible. The spine is on going towards the left of the heart. Therefore, this must be a level view. Now, how much a level view? The very little of the heart is behind the spine. Very little of the heart. And therefore, this must be quite a steep LAO view. 
So this is a steep elevo view. And why is it cranial? Because you're looking at it from above and the diaphragm is seen. Now, although those ribs and clavicle and everything are useful, when you interpret an angiogram, they are not visible. So you must learn to identify RAO and LAO based on the shape of the heart, on the position of the spine, on the amount of heart behind the spine, and whether diaphragm is visible or not. These are the clues to your identifying the projection. That's the foremost point in describing an angiogram. You must know what is the view. So you know familiar how to identify LAO cranial in a lim in a limited field? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is a figure which tells you AP, shallow LAO, steep LAO, and lateral. How much of the heart? You know. The same thing holds good for RAO view. When you go to RAO view, the AP, when you turn into, uh, more, uh, sorry, this is the AP view. When you turn into RAO view, you'll get a, 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 the typical cardiac egg contour, but some of the heart will still be overlapping on the spine. Steep RAO view will be, very little will be overlapping and, and lateral RAO view or uh, right lateral, the heart will be clear of the spine. The same principle on the RAO view also. Okay? Right. Uh, sir, uh, uh, one doubt, sir. Uh, sure. Uh, sir, right. about... Uh, the diaphragm, sir, what you told, sir, uh, relation like uh, to yes. the cranial and caudal, sir, I didn't get yeah. it. See, when you look from above, see, normally you are looking like this, at a horizontal plane. Okay, you don't see the diaphragm much. You don't see much of the diaphragm. But when you look from cranial, from here, like this, the heart and diaphragm will overlap. So if you see okay, a lot sir. of diaphragm on the heart, you mean, you know it is a cranial angiogram. Can you see the diaphragm is almost half of the heart? Ah, yeah, yes, sir, yes. Therefore, it is cranial angulation. Cranial. Okay, okay sir. Okay. Now, RAO view. How to identify RAO view? Look, I told you, you know, this is the typical, the egg-like contour of the heart. The spine is here. The spine has gone to the right of the heart. Therefore, it must be an RAO view. But it is still overlapping the spine. Therefore, it must not be a lateral view. So, this must be a somewhere shallow shallow RAO view. Can you see this is also an RAO view overlapping the spine? If it was steep RAO view, the heart would come and overlap very little on the spine or it would clear the spine like this. So these are two examples of RAO views. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe this is AP and this RAO. This is AP, this is RAO. Oh, yeah. No, no, wait, sorry. This is RAO straight. This is RAO cranial. Uh, this is because, can you see, can you see the diaphragm is thin? Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. Yes. So this RAO straight and RAO cranial. Now, is this also you must be able to identify the uh, chambers? Where is the LV here? Look for the LED. Anything on the left side of LV, LED is LV, shown in yellow here. Anything on the right side of LED is RV, but only up to the AV groove. What is what is lying in the AV groove? Hello? Circumflex. 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 Yes. Circumflex. Yes. So, now you know where the LV is, you know where the RV is, and now you know behind the circumflex is LA, shown here. Okay. Yes, right. Where will the RA be now? Tell me. Come on, RA wake up. will be behind. Behind? Behind whom? Behind what? I, I know you can't point out in this angle, but you can tell me, no? Describe it nicely. Behind RV. In this figure, tell me, Baba, how do I know behind? Behind, I see LA there. Come on, guys. I've been talking for 
45 minutes i thought you understood posterior to la sir because uh, that right av groove will be running on that side so we won't be able to see in this on fast view ah uh, not exactly see the ra will be lying plumb yeah. in front, front of la here it will be just you, you cannot mark ra now because it will be lying on this here exactly the, the you will see the atrial septum n phase you will see the atrial septum also called as the frontal view of the atrial septum or the on phase view of the atrial septum the, the ra and la will be lying one behind the other so if i have to draw ra i will draw it exactly on top of la are you following or not yes sir yeah don't say yes. behind don't say behind and everybody this is the av groove so the ra has to be here the only thing i cannot draw it separately it will have to overlap the ra la sorry ra and la will be overlapping here ra will be in front la will be behind yes am i clear yes okay yes sir. when you do when you do a cranial tilt you see more of diaphragm you see again between the circumflex you know the, uh, when you do a cranial tilt the circumflex goes up and the led comes down you are familiar with all these views i you know this probably better than me but now the lv lies between the circumflex and the led here here and ra rv lies here but the problem is now the the la has shifted because the cranial tilt la is no longer you don't see the av groove here anymore where is the av groove now the av groove is here because of the cranial tilt yes therefore anything anything above the av groove will be la very little of the la will be seen here yes Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Now, this is something difficult to un understand unless you have a model. Think about it. In without cranial tilt, you see R A L A all side by side. But when you have cranial tilt, suddenly the circumflex and L A disappears from sight, and the heart is actually foreshortened. You don't see the uh, egg-shaped appearance anymore. Okay, you are all familiar with this view, isn't it? What is it? Hello, 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 hello. So this is one of the most important view for bifurcation. Let's see a bifurcation. Okay, but that's not what I am teaching you now. What I am teaching you is where are the cardiac chambers here? So cardiac chambers, LED is here. Therefore, on the left side is left ventricle. This is the circumflex. Therefore, between the L L V circumflex, and then comes what is this L A? Now this is a very unusual position. You must remember in a caudal view, the L A goes down, and between the L V and R V is the left anterior descending artery. So it is all very confusing unless you have a clear mental image. When you do cranial tilt, it looks like this. When you do caudal tilt. LV goes on top, LA comes at the bottom. When you do cranial tilt, LV comes down and LA goes on top. Okay, are you able to relate to this figure? Ye yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Yeah. So now, any branch going in this direction, what will be those branches? From here, going this way, what will it be? I'm showing you from this the branch is going like this. What are those branches? O M. Very good. O M branches. If suppose some branches are going like this, what will they be? Left atrial circumflex. Yes, atrial branches. Very good. Suppose some branches are coming from like this. What are these? Diagonals. 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 Very good. Will you see the septal in this view? well you may see a few septal but 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 really speaking you won't see the septum here so this some foreshortened septals will be seen 
So that's the important. No? If you see a atrial branch coming like this, you shouldn't mistake it for a diagonal or some other branch. Sometimes you, you, you do get fistulas, you do get unusual stru structures filling from the coronary angio. So you must know exactly in all views where the LV is, where the LA is. Okay, what view is this? Come on, guys. You must be, you must be very, very sharp in these things. Areocranial. 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 Okay, so it, nice, nice view for profiling the middle lady. Also shows all the septals beautifully. The circumflex is out of view, behind. Okay, so here the LV is all disappeared. Why it has disappeared? Because all you are seeing is the septum. This is the on fast view of the septum. If you take out the LV RV wall you will see the on-first view of the septum. So what is overlying this part, what is overlying on top of this is the RV. You see only a little bit of LV in the, the above portion. So any branch going in this direction is diagonal. Any branch coming down perpendicularly is the septal. Right? What is this view? Oh, sorry. What is this view? Lateral. lateral, yeah, lateral, agreed. Lateral, I don't know whether cranial tilt has been given, but a little bit of diaphragm. That may be because the table is a little higher up position. But I don't think it's cranial. So in lateral, you see the LED forms the anterior-most border. And what is in front of the LED is a small bit of RV. Now, one of the radiological signs of RV enlargement is increase in the retrosternal space. You must have read. Normally, retrosternal space is limited. If the retrosternal space is increased, the RV, it's supposed to be one sign of RV enlargement. So this is the retrosternal space here. So the most of the view in this view, you see the LV and the circumflex is here and the LA is seen a little bit above there. So I'm draw these figures are very useful to know the lie of the hearts. Okay, right coronary artery, equally complicated. The, the beginning part comes from the high aorta, comes forward, and then it goes down and rightward, makes, and the, it turns around the AV groove, goes all the way to the crux, then turns around and runs up to the apex, again forward and leftward. So it's a very complex course. You do many views. And I've shown only one view here. Yes, come on, what view is this? Come on, guys, quick. Leocranial. Leocranial. Steep elevo, mild elevo. You never told me. I've been talking so long and still you're not using my, the terms I want you to use. Spine is here. Can you see the spine? Spine is seen. Yes. Spine is seen. The heart is still overlapping the spine. Steep elevo. Yeah, steep elevo, but it's because steep most of the heart is most of the heart is in front. And the, uh, even the left postrolateral branch is in front of the spine. Therefore, it must be a very steep LAO. But it's still overlapping the heart and the spine. Therefore, it's not true lateral. Steep LAO and cranial. Cranial. Diaphragm is seen. Okay. So now, can you identify the chambers? This is what is called the four-chamber view, isn't it? When you do a echocardiogram to show this view, you shall call it a four-chamber view. Because you can see all four chambers. This is the posterior descending artery, therefore it's the posterior interventricular groove. So it separates the RV from LV. RV, LV. Above the AV groove is the atrium. This is the RA and LA both together. There's no landmark to identify LA and RA. There's nothing to identify this. But anything above the AV groove is atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. Yes? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. yes. And, uh, this is the acute marginal branch forming the anterior cardiac border in RAO view. Uh, sorry, LAO view. Now, these figures you have to memorize, not memorize, understand. Sorry. Okay, this is the simplest view of her. when you do a RAO of the right coronary angio, the left heart chambers are all hidden behind the RA and LA. LA lies behind the RA here. And LV lies behind the RV here. Therefore, RA and RV are separated by the AV group. So you know where the 
RA ends and where the RV begins. So any branch going on this side is the RV branch. Any branch going on this side is the Atrial branch. branch. Okay. So now we come to the ventricular angiogram. What view is this angiogram? Areocranial. Oh my god. Sorry, areocranial. Areocranial. Only AP lateral is left. And then caudal is left. Areocranial, sir. Steep areocranial. Okay. okay, whoever said LAO, is a, LAO cranial is wrong because the heart has still a typical uh, egg shaped appearance. The heart, the spine has gone to the right of the spine, right of the heart. Therefore, it is a typically a RAO view. But is it steep RAO or mild RAO? It is steep RAO because very little of the heart is overlapping on the spine. If it was mild RAO, half of the heart would be overlapping on the spine. If it are total lateral, the, the heart would be clear of the spine. Now, this is the RAO. Now, I don't think there's any cranial. I think just because they've included more of vertic you know, and vertical extent, you're seeing the diaphragm. Because when you do a true cranial view, the heart has to overlap the diaphragm. Okay. Now, is the heart overlapping the diaphragm? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. So, sir, don't call it cranial. You have to be careful. No? Just because diaphragm is seen, don't jump to conclusion it is cranial. You have to you have to see whether the heart is overlapping the diaphragm or not. Somebody opens the field from head to foot, from here to here, you will see the diaphragm. You will not only say you'll even see the pelvic bones if you open enough. That doesn't make it cranial. The heart has to overlap the diaphragm. This is not cranial, this is the simple straight. RAO view done most commonly for LV assessment, MR assessment, and all that. Right? And that. And it is steep RAO view. No. Steep means more than 40, 50 degrees. That's not steep. It may be 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, doesn't matter. Okay. And what is the view of anatomical figure corresponding to that? Is yes, this one. Now, oh, sorry, one moment. Oh, what happened? Just a minute, I lost the image. Okay, can you see my image now? Ah, yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Now, see this, uh, this is just a diagram to explain this angio. Although I have shown only the LV angio is opacified, you must know where the RV is lying. The RV is lying plumb on top of it like this. Like this. So, the, the septum is on fast. It's facing you. That is why this view is not a good view to comment upon for VSD. Because the VSD is present, it will be coming towards you. How can you comment on a VSD which is coming towards you? Because the VSD jet will be hidden in the LV opacified mass. Therefore, this is not a good view for uh, commenting upon VSD. Angiogram is best for whatever is profiled sideways. Now, for example, this view is best for commenting upon the LV shape, for LV contractility, for mitral valve for mitral regurgitation into LA, for LA size, for LV outflow, for ascending aorta. Those are the structures which are best seen in this view. But it's not a good view for seeing the arch because here it is not profiled. It, it's not opened out yet. So here the RV is not opened out. The septum is not profiled. Therefore, you should not talk about VSTs in this view. Just to explain, look, this is how it looks. Although you are seeing the LV opacified, the, the red color, the RV blue color is actually sitting on top of it, like this. Can you imagine that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. Now you see, now another important point which I will refer to again later on in my slide. Now you see there's a coronary artery coming from here and going towards the left. Okay. I want you to tell me whether this coronary artery is in front of the pulmonary artery or behind the pulmonary artery. Behind the pulmonary artery. Okay. Be, behind the pulmonary artery. Why, why do you say that? Because iota is posterior. 
and palmi okay. arteries yes, and why why yes. it can come and that's not enough no I, it can come from aorta and then go anteriorly it can come from aorta and then go anteriorly like this okay just remember this we will we'll come back to the figure little later okay now these are what we use this there are two views shown here you have to you can describe uh this both the views you describe this first and this first at the second come on this is a still picture this is a movie in leo plane sir oh, sorry sorry okay you are describing the first one Spine is a Are you describing the first one or second one? The second one, Elio. Yeah, one person, please. You, when you talk together, I, it, I can't hear it. Yeah, this is the first one. Can somebody tell me what views this? ओके then you you must also remember where is the spine the spine is here and you can see the arterial catheter coming from here therefore this is posterior yes so more than 50% of the heart is overlapping the spine so what we use that shallow lo okay now half the heart is overlapping the diaphragm and therefore it is what cranial some, somewhat cranial cranial tilt this is also a levo cranial tilt oh sorry this is a levo cranial tilt but this is slightly different what way it is different this is all this is even less a levo can you see the left ventricle is entirely behind the spine here half of the lv is in front of the spine half is behind here the lv is entirely behind the spine so this is a shallow lvo this is more steep lvo but the difference between this and this is this ventricle is still ovoid whereas this ventricle is elongated why did we do this elongation because we want to separate out the basal portion of the ventricular septum from the mid portion from the apical portion because we have a vsd here and here and here we want to separate it out you want to elongate the septum therefore you are given more cranial tilt and therefore when you give more cranial tilt the left ventricle becomes even more elongated can you see how elongated it becomes so uh, this yeah, is an yes. this is an example of a shallow l sorry uh, moderate l levo mild cranial angulation This is an example of shallow levo with very steep cranial angulation. Why do you give steep angulation? Then you enlarge, enla elongate the septum. Then you can separate the basal VSD from mid muscular VSD from apical VSD. You can separate it. So if you have two or three VSDs, you will be able to see three distinct jets. But if you if you have three jets in this view, one or two of them may overlap each other. Okay. Also. the aorta goes horizontally like this can you see this it's going it going like this you know? so the L lv outflow is for shortened when you look from the left side it is shortened so if you give cranial tilt you can make it longer so you have get a better view of the lv outflow tract therefore you give more cranial tilt if you want to elongate the ventricle and elongate the septum you also get better views of the left ventricular outflow tract but when you give too much of cranial tilt what happens the arch and all will get distorted so what is good for ventricle may not be good for arch you must remember that okay 
So you must plan your angio as to how many number of angios you can do and how to do it. Are you following what I'm saying? Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, sir. yes. Okay. Right. Now let's come to the right ventricular angio. Now, when you do a right ventricular angio, what view is this? Come on. Now just practice for you. You must. Uh, uh, what view is that? APV, sir. APV, because, APV only, sir. Yes, mm -hmm. because both the ribs are symmetrical, the vertebral, the, the, the spinous, what is this called? Uh, pedicles of the vertebrae are exactly symmetrical and the spine doesn't appear rotated. So it is a straight AP view. So when you do an RV angio in AP view, the tricuspid valve lies on the left border of the spine, as shown here. This is the corresponding di diagram to explain that angio. Then RV inflow forms an apex here. Outside that is the LV, which you won't see. And then it leads into the outflow track. Okay. Now, this is what the model looks like. RA, LA, and it looks like. Okay. Now, what is, what is the problem in this view? The problem in this view is, although the RV and tricuspid valve are well shown, this portion is foreshortened. Can you see it's overlapping here? The RV is still here. This this is the RV. And the RV outflow is overlapping here. It, it's overlapping here. Can you make out? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Yes. Yeah, sir. Why, why is it overlapping? Because from here to here, it is horizontal. It is lying horizontally. Like this. When it is horizontal, in frontal view, it will overlap. Am I right? Y yes, sir. Okay, so if you want to see RV outflow and pulmonary valve well, what view should you do? I told you, no, anything in doubt, do perpendicular view. You have to give cranial, cranial tilt. No, oh, yeah, you can do cranial or you can do lateral view. One of them. Okay, one of the two, either cranial or lateral. So that's what we have done here. See, we have done lateral. Why it is lateral? Why it is lateral? Can you explain why it is lateral to me? The RV is anterior. RV is anterior. Totally anterior. And yes. you see that the spine is clear of the heart. There's no overlap between heart and the spine. The sternum also, the, the two, uh, no, man, the sternum has two sets of borders, the right border and the left border. When you are in oblique, they often separate out and you can see multiple borders. Here it is perfect. Right? And you can see, you see only one set of ribs. So it's a perfect lateral and there is diminished retrosternal space indicating some right ventricular enlargement. So when you do an RV angiogram, you see the typical right ventricular triangular shape and trabeculation. Now that's the, that's the model to explain to you where the RV is. But once you do that, you see that the RV outflow angulates posteriorly like this. And let's see what it shows. Oh, sorry, in this view, it's not so angulated. But, uh, but uh, norm, in tetralogy, and all, it angulates posteriorly. This particular angle is not going anteriorly. Okay, anyway. So, uh, if, if it's angulation, a cranial tilt or a lateral view will show that. like. Okay? Now, in this view, you must know, tell me, where is the RA here? Can you tell me where the, where is the RA here? Uh, yes, Just in front of the cell. Sir. 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 No, one person, please, one person. What did you say? Where is the RA lying here? I want to know where the position of RA is. Sir, in between the spine and uh, RV. Very good. Because the catheter has gone from IVC to RA, this, this is the RA here, on the spine and in between the RV and spine, and has gone through the tricuspid valve into RV. And that is the tricuspid valve. Okay, by the way, what catheter is that? I... Burman, sir. Burman catheter, sir. Burman, sir. Balloon is a distal tip. Sorry, that incomplete. You get only quad mark. What catheter is that? 
Berman has designed many catheter. If you say Berman catheter, you get only quarter mark. Reverse Berman catheter, sir. Sorry, you lose that. You lose that quarter mark also. Okay. Oh, yeah, the balloon is at the tip. Holes are proximal to the Burma. Burma. What do you fill the balloon with? Carbon dioxide. You you use carbon dioxide in your hospital? We don't have carbon. Then why do you say carbon dioxide? <laughs> okay, no, it's I, not available. Is yeah, no. ideal ideal is carbon dioxide, but uh, if not available, most of us use the air. What is the disadvantage of air? Rupture and embolism. Okay, so some, one day I'm going to ask you air embolism in the heart. Eh? So suddenly I will ask you one day. So you you will tell me the clinical features and treatment and all. I'm not discussing it today. but i've given you a warning that i'll ask you okay now re re remember i asked you the lie of the coronary artery like that so this is a very important if uh, can you describe these two angles for me Mm, yes sir uh, the first one uh, is the ap sir plain ap S sir uh, you view you are asking sir or complete yeah everything hey, come on man when i show you an angio i want view i want description of the angio i want diagnosis everything sir the first one is the plain ap view sir uh, we can see and uh, with autogram sir so the way to say it is autogram done in such and such a view don't say plain ap view it's an iotogram stop It'll talk like a report no iotogram yes, done in so such and such a view yes sir and the second one autogram done in the lateral view sir okay both of them are wrong Le left sir somebody else can try hey, come on i have just showed this is a this is a egg shaped heart the apex is cut off here egg shaped Are you Uh, heart is uh, overlapping the spine. Or one is uh, this is a typical RA view, and this is a typical LA view. Heart steep LA view. Heart is overlapping the spine. The spine is on the left side of the heart. So this is RA view. This is LA view. Iotogram. It's actually biplane of the same angiogram. Okay. Now what does it show? It shows anomalous coronary. Oh come on! After angiogram, anomalous coronary. Then what is the, what is right side iotic heart? Okay, I uh, know. I'm talking. Of, now let's talk of coronary. I I've shown you this angiogram already. Yeah, I've discussed right artery, right aberrant subclavian artery. Everything I've discussed already. I I what is a coronary? Describe the coronary for me. The RC is originating from the uh, LAD, sir. Okay. This uh, and coming uh, right coronary artery is coming from the guys. Come on, you're sleeping. Yes. I I showed you this angio only uh, only a yes, week ago. Yes, a single. Uh, are you, are you, RCA arising from left. I think you guys are sleeping. Either today or you are sleeping last week. Okay. So the right coronary artery arising from the left coronary artery and coming into the right AV groove. Now mm -hmm. what I am interested is whether this is coming in front of the PA or is coming behind the PA. That is what I am interested in. You have got two views here. Can you tell me? You see, I'll tell you. See, behind. that is why. That is why I have uh, the behind. Yes, tell me. What is that? Behind pulmonary artery, sir. So. Ah, uh, no, you're wrong. See, the left coronary artery comes from the left sinus, goes behind the pulmonary artery, and emerges on the left side. So it comes behind like that here. There it gives off the RCA, and the RCA is making a convex loop upwards like this and coming to the right side. 
Yeah. Like this, it's coming. Now, can you see the corresponding specimen here? It's coming from the left and coronary artery, like that. If it was coming from the left coronary artery behind the RV outflow, it will have to be concave, like this. Like this. Because this is a concave structure here. And this is a convex structure here. Can you make curve? Similarly in LAO, lateral or LAO view, whatever. Can you see the RCA is making a big convex loop on front. Now in this view, where is the pulmonary artery? The pulmonary artery is lying in this convex, like this, here. You must, that's the importance of knowing the cardiac anatomy. So can you see this? The pulmonary artery is lying here, like this. So you're not seeing the pulmonary artery here, but it's actually lying here, like this. Like this. So now I know this artery is going like this to the right AV groove. It's coming from the aorta and then it's going like this to the in front of the like this palm artery. You understand? If it was going behind, it would form a, a concave loop. Like because if palm artery is lying like a circle here, like this. Palm artery is here. If it is in front, you will see it like this. If it is behind, you will see it like this. I think I had an angio in frontier last week. Surya, do you remember that anomalous LCA? Yes, sir. Uh, that, that was going behind the RVOT. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, that angio, I must uh, I'll, I'll see if I have, I can show it to you later. Anyway, so can you see this? This is in front. And this is, if it was behind, it would go like this. So you it's you have to imagine that the pulmonary artery is lying in this concavity here. And the, that is the specimen here. This, this sort of angiogram is much easier to interpret if you have the specimen in your hand. So the left coronary artery emerges from the iota here. So look, it comes out here. And then it arches like this on top of the pulmonary artery and goes to the right AV groove. If it was going behind, it would form a concave loop like this. Now I'll go back to the angio I showed you right at the beginning. Remember I showed, told you one angio, I'll come back. I don't know where that angio is gone. Wait. Yes, uh, no, not this one. No, I don't know where that is. I think, of, anyway, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do it some other time. So, you, you got that? Did you understand or not? Y yes, sir. Yes. So yes, when yes, you have yes. anabolous coronary artery, please make, you have to identify where the pulmonary artery is and see whether it's in front or behind. So it can go in front of the pulmonary artery, it can go behind the pulmonary artery, it can go even behind the aorta. There are four, three or four different courses for anabolous coronary artery. Please read up everything about it. Okay. Now, if it is in front of the pulmonary artery, it's important for patients with tetralogy of fallow. For example, this patient has a right aortic arch and all that, therefore must be tetralogy of fallow. It's very important it's crossing in front. If it is behind the pulmonary artery and it is in between the pulmonary artery and aorta, it can cause compression. If it is behind the aorta, it is safe. Nothing can compress it there because behind the aorta is only LA. LA can't compress it. Okay. This Now, this angio also I showed you some, uh, some time back. Can you tell me what view is that? Laid back, yes. Laid back view. What is what is laid back view? Explain to me. Explain to me. PA cordal. Mm, oh, PA cordal. Oh, oh, this is not PA cordal. This cordal is right. PA is not correct. The ribs are all uh, oblique, no? It's a LAO, no? The heart is a, it's a shallow LAO. Okay. Anyway. 
Now, can you? This is the enfast wave. You can see one corner artery coming from this sinus from front. So, this is the enfast wave. You see the three sinuses and cuff beautifully, and the corresponding view. Can you see the caudal view here shown here? LAO view, caudal. I've turned the heart so that it reflects. I've removed the anterior wall. I've turned my model into LAO view, and I'm looking at it from the apex. This is the apex. I am standing at the apex and looking up at the aortic valve. So the septum is foreshortened, LV is foreshortened, but I am able to see the three sinuses and three cuffs beautifully separately. I can identify which coronary artery is coming from which sinus, just like one is coming from here, one is coming from here. There is no coronary artery coming from this sinus. Yeah. Now, but this is okay. This caudal view and or uh, what is that? Uh, laid back view is okay for knowing the sinus origin of coronary artery. But then it doesn't serve much purpose for telling me the distal coronary arteries, branches, and all. It also doesn't help me in the arch. I don't see the arch at all. Why do I don't see the arch? Because in steep caudal view, the arch is completely hidden. It is foreshortened. Do you see the arch here? It goes like this. And then comes like this, so you don't see the arch; it doesn't profile at all. So this view is only for knowing the sinus origin of the coronary arteries, and this is the corresponding anatomical view. Again, I'm emphasizing how to how to understand this anatomy and make a diagnosis. This is the uh, enfast view. Okay, is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, it's already three thirty, so I think I should stop now. Right. So what I have done today is to show you the surface markings of the cardiac chambers, how to identify oblique uh, views, AP view, lateral view, different degrees of oblique view, different degrees of cranial and caudal tilt, how the cardiac cellar changes in different shape. How the coronary arteries change in different views, and how to select views according to the structure that you want to see. Now you cannot understand and digest all of it in one session. I can understand that. You have to. First thing is, I think you have to get a model. I would suggest strongly get a model. It's available online. It's available in anatomy and bookshops everywhere. So. You can get a model, or even this medical company. Some of them give it. So try to make use of that whenever you describe an angiogram, so that you understand that some models are very good, but some models are not very good. You have to be find a good model which are really representative of the normal anatomy. Mm. Of course, you cannot have models of abnormal anatomy because they don't make it. But models of normal heart, if you have in your hand, that is good enough so that you can identify structure. But please uh, try to. Interpret every angiogram in the light of an. Try in each one you must be able to identify where each chamber is, each structure. Is. Suddenly one day somebody asks you where is the right coronary artery in this. You must be able to pinpoint. You shouldn't have to think. If I suddenly ask you where will be the left apex of the LV in this angiogram, you have to point out. This is very important for your interventional procedures to know where exactly each spot in the heart is, without any landmark. Because most of the time when you do intervention, you don't have a landmark. Okay, so I think I'll stop here. You, sir, yes, sir yes. Uh, any yes. uh, for sh for shallow and steep, any particular cutoff is there, sir? See, if you most angiogram nowadays gives a printout. You know, most modern system, when you do an angio, automatically it, it prints out on the top. L level thirty, cranial thirty, and all it prints it out. So actually, nowadays you describe it as 30 degrees LAO, 60 degrees LAO, and so on. Uh, but in an examination, you don't really have to bother about that. And mm -hmm. uh, and these values are not fixed. In one person, 30 degrees LAO may give you a best image. In another patient, uh, 30 degrees may not give you a best image. 40 degrees may give you a best image. So mm -hmm. somewhere between 20 to 30 degrees is considered. Shallow, somewhere between 30 to 60, 70 is considered moderate. 60, 70, 80 is considered steep, and 90 is considered lat lateral. Similarly, LAO, 
20 to 40 shallow 40 to 60 70 steep 70 to 90 very steep or lateral okay sir okay any other question sir in uh, uh, sir sorry sir steep, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sir there will be more overlap as compared to shallow or less overlap uh, no no i can't hear you uh, sir in steep view uh. Uh, there will be more overlap as compared to shallow view or less overlap? Sorry, say that again. Uh, in steep view, sir, there will be yeah. more overlap or, as or less overlap as compared to shallow See, view. See, the normal heart always overlaps and shallow always overlap. Moderate always overlap. It is a steep and lateral, we don't overlap. Steep, steep overlap very little and lateral doesn't overlap. So the shallow ones and AP always overlap. So if you are considering by overlap, you must say say half of the heart is overlapping, it is shallow. Uh, only one third of the heart is overlapping, steep. No overlapping, lateral. Okay. Sir, four chamber view, is it shallow and low or steep and low, sir? She's shallow. Shall For chamber view, typically you know, 30, 30 degrees LAO and 30, 25, 30 degrees cranial. Okay. Shallow LAO, cranial. Sir, uh, some people also call it hepatoclavicular view, 20 to 20 to 25 degrees LAO and 30, 35 degrees cranial, hepatoclavicular view. Uh, nowadays, people don't uh, describe it as hepatoclavicular fourth chamber and all. They, they actually describe what degrees they did. So like you, you describe what you, you did, 20 degrees cranial with 30 degrees LAO. That is the best way of describing. Sir, it is described LAO 40-40, 40, 40, sir. 40-40, yeah, I, I think there will be minor variations here. Yeah. Hepatic clavicular, all those things, minor book will, variation, will be. Okay. Yes, any other question? Sir, uh, regarding that abnormal uh, uh, course of the artery, sir, mm. uh, the one which we, we you showed was like um, uh, RC arising from uh, LAD. It had the con. Uh, the con no, no, no. It was the it was the LA, uh, the one I showed. Yes. Mm. Yes, sir. Um, and uh, what we saw was like uh, LAD arising from RC, sir. Does the yeah, I know, but and convexity thing up, uh, applies to that also? Sir? Yeah, yeah, it applies to that. Anything crossing the RVOT front or behind, it remains the same. In fact, uh, I don't have that angle. I will show it to you next time. I, it is on my phone. I will show it to you next time. Okay, sir. It applies to that also. Anything crossing RV, OT, so you have to check whether it's concave or convex, uh, no, convex upwards or concave downwards, uh, convex downwards, no? downwards. Yes, sir. Sir, sir hepatoclavicular view is same as uh, apical four chamber view, which is uh, LAO shallow. No, no. Ap ap apical four chamber is used in echo. It's not used in angio. Yes. Uh, it, yes, it corresponds to that. Corresponds, corresponds to, to, yeah, corresponds yes, to. Correct. correct. Shallow elevo cranial. Yes. Mm. Okay. Sir, uh, one more thing, sir, like uh, indications of views in uh, ASD, VSD, PDA, and all those uh, views, sir. Can we have, sir, like indication? Like what? Like for MR, uh, the uh, good view, like you showed, sir, it is a RAO view, sir, where okay. you can assess the mm. MR, mm. where you can see the LA, LV, out and LVOT. So, mm. so like that, uh, different views, uh, where all we are we are using, sir, that can we have, sir, a short... Uh, sure, we can, but, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I thought the congenital fellows would be more interested in that. I, I don't mind doing that, but uh, there must be other pediatric fellows also in your group. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. I think uh, 15, yeah, 10, yeah, 15 that, people. Yeah, yeah, good. So then I can do the angiographic views for congenital heart disease you're talking, no? That's what you want. Y yes, sir. Yes, sir. Angiographic views for congenital heart disease. At least, congenital the, common, at least the common one. Petrology, VSD, ASD. Correct, correct, sir. Correct. Yeah, we can do that. We can do it one day. But again, I'll have to prepare it. I, I don't have it offhand. Y yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. Oh, sir, can you simplify dot and I classification, sir? That's, uh... Dot and I. Yes, I can, but I need slides. I don't have it ready now. 
some some other time i'll note it down and some other time i will sort out your question i know dot and i is uh, i may also useful in an uh, anamorous coronary artery coronary yes yes, mm. yes. um Okay. I'll explain to you some other time uh, when we ha- because I need slides and it will take a long time for me to find those slides and put it here. So one is dot and I and one is angiographic views for congenital heart disease. Anything else, sir? Will the coronary lay uh, vary with the art sidedness, sir, on angio? No, okay. it doesn't. It won't vary with art sidedness. No, but it will vary if it is. normal lie of the ventricle or inverted ventricles like in a ctga the coronary arteries will be inverted the because there must, will be a great artery inversion also in ctga it doesn't depend it doesn't depend on the great artery it depend more on the ventricle the lv on the left side so left coronary artery will go on the left side no oh, sorry on the right side lv will go on the right side okay so the morphological left coronary artery will go on the right side but the aortic arch itself it doesn't change Okay. Sir, will the left okay. coronary originate from left coronary cusp, and then will it run along LV or? No, 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 no. It will. It will. In even there will be. Uh, I show. In fact, I showed you that that laid back angio. I showed you, no. That's the yes. CTG actually. I'll show you one second. Let me get it back here. <laughs> Can you see the angle, you know? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. Now, normally the coronary artery come from the which sinuses? I explained to you this this when I talked last week. I thought I had explained all this to you. Okay. So that shows the coronary artery. Normally, the aorta lies behind the PA, isn't it? So, which are the coronary, uh, which are the sinuses which give the coronary arteries? Left and right, sir. Okay. I notice left and right. What is the position? Left anterior and right anterior. Okay. What lies posteriorly is what the non-coronary sinus. You agree? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Y- yes. Now, in in CTJ, what is the position of the aorta? it is anterior and left to pulmonary anterior so I- aorta comes anterior and the pulmonary artery goes posterior now it's a anatomical principle that coronary arteries will always come from the facing sinuses that means the two sinuses adjacent to the pulmonary arteries will give off the coronary arteries the sinus which is away from the pulmonary artery normally will not give any coronary artery okay is that clear yes sir yes sir okay. yes, so in a ctga now we have three sinuses 1 2 and 3 this is there what sinus is this anterior sinus anterior non coronary sinus non facing non 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 facing non coronary sinus that means in a normal no in a normal aortic arch the non coronary sinus is posterior in a anteriorly placed aorta the non coronary sinus is anterior that is the first and foremost thing so both the coronary arteries come from the the two posterior now there are two posterior sinuses okay one is the left and one is the right now because the ventricles are inverted the lv is lying here and the rv is lying on the left side they will be morphologically inverted that means the right morphological coronary artery will come from the left posterior sinus and supply the morphological rv am i making sense or is it confusing the left posterior sinus will give the right morphological artery and it will supply the morphological systemic right ventricle i'm going very slowly to make you understand the left coronary artery will come from the right posterior sinus 
it will be morphologically left coronary artery there will be a circumflex and there will be a circumflex and a lady and it will supply the morphological lv did i make sense yes, yes sir, sir. Okay. so so it doesn't arise from like the left the position it doesn't arise from the left sinus and go like that it doesn't it it arises from the corresponding sinus the left the right posterior sinus now acts as a left left sinus actually it plays on the right side but gives out the morphological lc and you, you know it's left coronary artery because the way it divides no it bifurcates into circumflex and lad whereas this doesn't bifurcate in fact if you carefully see you can see uh, can running in the av groove here you got it how now you understood what is a, a ctg coronary lie pattern yes yes sir. Yes, sir. yes sir okay so when you want to do a coronary angio in a ctg a patient uh, it better to take a multi catheter multi purpose catheter so that you know whether it's the left sinus or right sinus or uh, anterior sinus a multi catheter would be much more easy and the preform jutkin may sometimes give you difficulty because it may not be the ideal one for entering a posterior sinus artery but sometimes even the jutkin just sits in that's not a problem you have to hunt hunt for the posterior sinus if if you can't hook it easily that's it so right will hook the left and left will hook the right is it so so yes yeah, true now this is only for a straight forward ctg if you have dextrocardia and all that then it becomes more complicated i'm to- not talking about it. the straight forward ctg if you hook it like a left you probably will get a morphological rc and if you hook it like the left or uh, 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 right you may get lca but you may have to hunt for it because uh, rca is not coming from the it's not coming from the anterior sinus normal rca comes from anterior sinus no it is coming from the posterior sinus so you know, sometimes anomalous rca you have to hunt for it no a little bit with a little bit of change of catheters maybe tig tig catheter or maybe with a ampullary catheter or even with a multi purpose catheter you have to hunt for it a little bit not difficult it's it easy yes sir okay any other question now we are done okay yeah yes sir okay so next time we are going to i want to discuss something about uh, angiography more a little more about angiography maybe uh, how to do an angio contrast to a injection and all those things so if, uh, so we'll discuss probably on tuesday i a little more about angiograph angiographic contrast and other things huh? so, uh, how much to oh, inject okay, what sir. what not and all those things hmm? right so no more questions oh. okay yeah. what is the attendance today so i think around us 80 people join okay right good no okay right thank, thank you everybody thank you thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you so much okay thank you sir thank you sir